thank you very much for the introduction. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for joining us this morning at uh, this very important effort. Um, as was mentioned, uh, Joseph Billingsley, uh, U.S. Army major, uh, but on leave today, and uh, speaking to you as PhD student Joseph Billingsley uh, from the Information Sciences Department of, uh, of the Naval Postgraduate School out of Monterey, California. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, give you a, a brief summary, an overview of, uh, of some of my efforts um, into studying and doing innovation within the DOD uh, over the past few years. So, this is our agenda. So, first uh, and foremost, the most basic question, what are we talking about innovation here? Uh, there are different schools of thought on that, of course. Uh, many people prescribe to the, uh, the ideation, uh, more creativity-focused uh, school of thought, um, operationally defining an innovation as uh, typically some new technology or a widget, um, software solution, flux capacitor, something like that. Uh, for the purposes of, uh, of this discussion, we're going to understand innovation as the adoption of a new practice within a community. And, uh, and how we define innovation uh, moving forward is, is very important. Um, and this particular innovation being taken from Dr. Denning's uh, book, his uh, framework for generating successful innovation, The Innovator's Way, um, is focused on the adoption part, the follow through, all the work that goes into that, uh, the selling phase, which uh, for all of you innovators out there, know that that is, uh, is quite an effort. Um, and it's good that we define that and understand that up front so we, we know what it takes to, to follow through and make things happen. So Dr. Denning's framework, uh, the, the gist of it is uh, there are eight interrelated um, practices. And I'm going to, to cover each one. They don't uh, necessarily have to go sequentially, but for this discussion, we're just going to go uh, from top to bottom. The first grouping is the main work of invention, really sensing what is possible out there and envisioning um, what, what you can do about it, connecting those dots that haven't been connected yet, uh, building those bridges that haven't been uh, built yet, um, filling those gaps um, that have been identified in, uh, in, in planning documents. Second grouping, the main work of adoption, the real work, um, the offering, the adopting, the sustaining. Um, and third, the, uh, the environment for the other practices, something that we in the military community do on a pretty daily basis, the executing, the leading, and the embodying. So. I started off uh, studying innovation as a master's student at the Naval Postgraduate School. Um, I found myself as a functionary 59 strategist, Army strategic plans and policy officer, um, there on a brand new scholarship and an opportunity to really do something of strategic import that had to, uh, to do with the cyber fight to make a, a lasting and meaningful contribution. And the byproduct of that and the uh, the main instrument of my data collection uh, for these innovation studies has been the Military Cyber Professionals Association. That was my innovation. So that as the case study, we're just going to go through step by step um, what, what I went through. So as a good Army strategist, I started with strategic planning uh, documents uh, from uh, DA, from DOD, from the inspiring words of commanders like Lieutenant General Rhett Hernandez at the time was a uh, Army Cyber Command commander um, and his successor, Lieutenant General Cardone of Army Cyber Command, uh, stressing the need and the importance of taking care of the people who are doing this work, this extremely important work uh, for our national defense. And then I also drew upon my own background, academic background, personal background, operational background from tons of different sources to really, again, identify what still needed to be done. Onto the envisioning, I eventually came upon the idea of how a professional society or professional association could not only galvanize this community, but then also raise the standards of it in various different ways. 
I knew that I wanted to have a, 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 a crowdsourcing, a problem solving, a, a, a community intelligence aspect of it uh, built into the design from the very beginning. I knew it needed to be uh, grounded and embedded within the, the culture, including the heraldry um, and symbology of this particular community. Uh, further embedding us into the incentive structure of this particular community, we uh, establish our own recognition program uh, that there is the Order of Thor Medal, that uh, folks who have made uh, special contributions to this field uh, have been recognized with, usually by a general officer or flag officer. Uh, of course, I knew I needed to do this all and keeping myself out of trouble along the way, so consulting with uh, Navy JAGs, Army JAGs, uh, civilian lawyers, all along the way, making sure that I stayed within the left and right limits. Uh, one important aspect of that is that I'm doing this all as a volunteer, not getting compensated or paid uh, anything additionally for this. So security, of course, was an important uh, aspect to have uh, built in, particularly with this community from the very beginning. So I spent many an hour, um, instead of surfing out in Monterey Bay, um, figuring out how to stand up a, a relatively secure um, uh, online infrastructure for this community. And uh, when I hit a brick wall, uh, as far as my own skill set and experience um, uh, demanded, which was uh, establishing a, a business concept for this organization, I turned to appropriate folks to get help, and uh, I participated in an event called Startup Weekend Monterey Bay back in 2013, and uh, got the help of a team uh, with considerable business experience from different sectors, and including Silicon Valley. And they were extremely helpful in uh, helping me flush out the eaches as far as, okay, how is this exactly going to be paid for? And uh, managing the ends, ways, and means along the way. So the adoption part. So I started off uh, offering this concept, uh, first and foremost, to Dr. Peter Denning, uh, who wrote the Innovator's Way, uh, that general framework that I had mentioned before, who also happened to be the lead of the computer science department at the Naval Postgraduate School and also the director of the Sabrowski Institute for Innovation. So after getting him on board, established a very simple web presence, really just a one pager with the mission and vision, and uh, worked with other partners such as the Public Affairs Office from the Naval Postgraduate School to get some articles out there online. And it's, uh, it was very interesting how that information propagated to its intended target. Uh, eventually coming to the desk of Major General John Davis of uh, OSD Cyber Policy, uh, whose team reached out to me and he actually came on board as a, as a member of my, my thesis committee, uh, which, was, which was great, great. Still continues to be a great relationship. Um, offering it to, uh, to various senior leaders there, uh, like General Alexander. Um, and uh, this uh, here is a, is a more updated picture from this year. Uh, with the leadership from the St. Louis chapter of the Military Cyber Professional Association offering this concept within their own local community in anticipation of a hackathon that they put on for the, uh, for the St. Louis region, which, uh, which was great. You can find that on YouTube as well. So the adoption practice, uh, really the uh, getting people to adopt uh, the innovation has been great. Um, we continue to grow steadily and this is uh, really providing uh, a lot of great data um, for me in, uh, in fleshing out the pattern of, uh, of innovation adoption which has been the focus of my PhD research which I'll touch on in a, in a couple minutes as well. Um, but it's, uh, it's always great to see uh, others adopt this innovation and really make it their own and, uh, and run with that ball. It's been a lot of fun. So the sustaining aspect um, practice, really setting up a structure in place, you know, to ensure that, that this uh, innovation can continue on, and healthily so. Um, part of that is, was uh, establishing national level staff, um, board of directors, board of advisors. Um, in addition to that, um, making good on promises made. So there, uh, that, that's the cover of Cyber, our new magazine, which, uh, which you can get some hard copies of at the Cyber Pavilion that we put together upstairs in Hall E. Um, and like I would mentioned before, the Hack the Arch um, um, competition from the St. Louis area. Um, 
and, uh, and uh, of course, corporate sponsors, um, ensuring that we could pay our bills uh, to, to, to reach our mission, uh, which we've been very thankful and, uh, and very lucky to, uh, to have their support as well. So the environment for the other um, practices, you know, th this, is, this is what we do in the military on a daily basis, leading, executing, and embodying, just making a part of what you do without even thinking about it, without even need needing to purposely do it. It just becomes a part of you. So uh, I think everybody here has already got that part under control and understands that. But it, uh, it got me interested um, in thinking about the DOD as a, as a natural place for innovators to emerge, whether you're talking about innovation within the DOD or you know after somebody transitions uh, um, to another sector of the economy. And it got me pretty interested in taking a look at what else is being done across DOD as far as innovation goes. Now, of course, uh, you know, the Innovators Corner here is a great example of, uh, you know, AUSA and the, the larger Army community uh, being serious about innovation and, and, and really doing something about it and putting their, their, their back into it and dollars applied to that. And, of course, we've seen that, you know, with the publication right there um, about the uh, Army Innovation Program and, and various other efforts. Um, the, the best example of an innovation structure or innovation office that I had found um, at the time was in DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency. They have a robust program in place, um, a, a very well-oiled machine at this point. And, uh, and we were able to adapt that concept uh, at the Army Cyber Command headquarters and establish our own uh, innovation structure. And uh, the main characteristic uh, of that has been the, uh, the incubation model, um, where the, the basic idea is you have some uh, type of usually online portal where uh, folks from across the organization can post their ideas or innovations, champion them, explain them. Uh, in a crowdsourced method, other members of the organization are able to vote, comment, vote up or down, um, let those good ideas uh, bubble to the top, let the cream rise to the top, if you will, and then the leadership to, uh, to prune those, to pluck those great ideas, select the top three, for example, something like that for a further pitch uh, by the champions of those ideas in front of uh, some type of, uh, of resource board, and then if decided to, uh, to go ahead and, uh, and resource it, then to go ahead and evaluate, and depending on the type of innovation, whether if you're talking about a software innovation or policy innovation or, you know, any other type of innovation, you know, there's certain types of resources, including time associated with that. So that's where, uh, there, where that comes into play as far as um, trying to lower the risk, um, increasing the success rate with, uh, with these good ideas by, by having some type of support structure in place. Um, and lucky for everybody in the DOD, um, Mill Suite, the collaboration um, bunch of tools online, uh, open and free for everybody with a, a, a DOD CAC, um, can access a, a new function on there called Eureka, uh, which does exactly this type of function and can serve for free as an enterprise solution immediately. Uh, just take some uh, elbow grease to figure out how to configure it, and that could be done by uh, somebody not technical at all, so no, no need for intimidation there. I've, I've been very, very pleased with, with that particular tool. Was very, very glad to see that. So on to the, uh, the PhD research um, where, like I mentioned, I have been taking a look at the pattern of innovation adoptions and marrying that up with uh, theory associated with uh, social network dynamics, um, mostly having to do with um, the, 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 the uh, scale-free network characteristics of, uh, of social networks and how that impacts in a quantitative manner um, all sorts of examples of, uh, of innovation adoptions. Given a large enough uh, pool of, uh, of adopters and, and enough time, uh, I have found that a very interesting and consistent pattern emerges, uh, which I'm, I'm looking forward to expanding upon in my dissertation. So uh, that being said, I'm always looking for more data sets uh, to run through the, uh, the models uh, that I've developed uh, looking at that. Um, if you might have something that we could consider an innovation, um, 
and adoption data, uh, please uh, please forward that on to me. Let me know about that. Um, I got my hands on a, on a couple uh, very interesting data sets recently. Uh, one from Millbook, um, one of the components of Mill Suite, the uh, the collaboration uh, services for for DoD members, and a very interesting data set um, from the Harmony Project out of the Counterterrorism Center uh, up at West Point, um, having to do with um, with foreign fighters joining ISIS. And interestingly enough, um, it's, uh, it's, it's matching all of my findings as well. So uh, I'm really excited about this. Um, so the more data sets I could get my hands on, uh, like I said, please forward that on to me. Um, finally, in closing, just a, a reminder, you know, of course, we're here to talk about uh, the Warfighter Challenge number seven, having to do with, uh, with cyber and uh, the electron, uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, this is all very relevant. Um, the work that uh, we've done and many people are doing, many of you are doing, um, is extremely relevant. And, uh, and please keep it up, despite the odds and all, all the work associated with that. Uh, I think you know, the, the, more, uh, the more people who look into innovation seriously and study it and publish about different aspects of it, or innovology, uh, if you will, um, the less mysterious it'll be and uh, the higher success rates uh, we'll enjoy. Um, it absolutely is hard work. I have a lot more gray hairs than, than I should. Um, can be risky, of course, as well. Um, as, a, as an innovator w within an organization, um, you know, could run into legal problems, could run into financial problems, could run into political problems. I'm sure uh, you are all very, very well aware of that already. And uh, I must say, uh, it can also be very fun. It can be very fun. I've made a lot of friends um, delving into innovation um, and purposefully doing it. Um, and uh, with that, um, I'm open to, uh, to any questions, comments, concerns you might have. Um, and if not, um, like I'd mentioned before, uh, for the rest of the day, I'll be up at the Cyber Pavilion in Hall E. Um, or you can, uh, you can reach out to me via email as well.